Okay. Hello, everybody. Good evening um, to everybody. On behalf of the Swiss Jam and Deloitte, we would like to welcome you all to this um, third edition of the public uh, pitching night. So we're very uh, happy to have um, the two subcategories tonight, business services and building infrastructure. So on behalf of the Swiss Cham and, and Deloitte, a, a big, big thank you for joining in today. I would like to also welcome all our applicants that are preparing in the background for the pitching. So we will have three pitches by subcategory tonight. And we have also our esteemed jury board here. So welcome also to all the people that are gonna be sitting on the jury board today. Uh, really appreciate your uh, support and connection. So we are gonna start very soon. What I would like to do um, as an introduction is to give you some perspective of this Digital Transformation Award. So if Clarissa, you will be so kind to just go one further. So this Digital Transformation Award was initiated by Swiss Cham last year, actually in the midst of the pandemic. Um, so we were all, you know, um, locked down in our offices and we were thinking about, you know, how we could help the ecosystem. And we felt obviously that digital transformation was a key trend um, that would be accelerated in the coming weeks and months. And we also heard from many um, of our members that they felt a bit isolated and that they had worked on a lot of projects in digital transformation. So the overall goal was from the very beginning to provide a platform to all these companies um, in the region to really showcase what they um, have been doing for digital transformation. So, you know, we started to, um, to kind of reach out to people and we, we got a lot of positive feedback and that encouraged us to come back this year um, with a, you know, extension into the region. So. This uh, year, it's really about ASEAN because as you all well know, um, the region is, is very important. It's not just Singapore, but it's really all the countries that are surrounding Singapore. So, and what is also very important is that we have a lot of uh, support from the ecosystem. So from the very beginning, it was clear that we didn't want to have this as a isolated initiative, but we wanted to reach out to the ecosystem. So we're very glad to have the support of the American Chamber, the German Chamber, the Euro Cham, the French Chamber. So as you can see, this is a very broadly anchored initiative in the ecosystem and we are very happy about that. And obviously what I um, should also mention is all the sponsors and they are very, very important in that initiative. And again, a very warm uh, thank you to all our sponsors. They have been terrific. Uh, in supporting us and without you, this um, would have not been possible. And so big, big thank you out to you. As you can see, we have some new additions in the, in the subcategories. So we have added um, insurance. We have also added cybersecurity, which is a very relevant topic. And we also added building and infrastructure, which is um, very relevant in a, in a region where we have a lot of infrastructure and, um, you know, the, the, the whole region is, is actually in a, in a building um, spree uh, over infrastructure, but then also, um, you know, with all the, um, the budgets that are being spoken for infrastructure. I think it's a very relevant um, subcategory. We also have business services um, this year, and you will, you will hear about some of these pitches in that subcategory, and we are very excited to, to hear them tonight. So Clarissa, if you're so kind to go one further. All right, so where do we stand um, tonight? So we have finished our closed door selection. We had our private sessions um, and we had very exciting discussions to narrow down actually the uh, applicants. So we have 22 shortlisted companies um, that are competing um, for the winner of the subcategory. And this is what's happening right now uh, tonight, but already happened on the 24th, 25th last week. So we have very exciting pitches 
And you know, these pitches should really allow to identify the winner, which will then go into a final pitch on the 9th of December on um, the final award night. And we are very excited to see tonight who is gonna join the overall uh, final award night on the 9th of December. So with that, maybe one further, Clarissa. All right, and obviously this whole award is a lot about uh, competing and about you know, learning, but it's also about winning. And we have some amazing prizes here from our um, dear sponsors. So we have, for instance, you know, for financial service, we have a, a trip to Zurich. So our, our sponsors were very innovative on how they put together their, their package and especially also for tonight. We have RIB here, so also, um, also Andre Schütz is here and they are offering um, you know, two days of intensive online workshop for the winner. Um, so I think these are all very um, interesting prices for the, um, for the winners of these subcategories. And obviously, um, you know, what is really important is a night like tonight where people can come together and showcase what they have been doing. And with, with this, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on, um, on talking about the prices, but really open the floor uh, for the participants. So Clarissa, if you go just one further, Obviously, we will have some rules. So for tonight, um, we will have each company pitching three minutes and we will have three minutes of Q&A. So our jury board will um, you know, ask questions for three minutes. On the three minutes for the pitch, we, we will have to be very strict because it's, um, it's a very tight schedule that we have tonight. And um, we obviously wanna provide a, um, uh, a playing field that is even for everybody. Um, as you will see tonight, the companies will have to answer three major questions. The first question is about why digital transformation has been important for that company. Secondly, why they should win the award. That's an obvious question, right? So we want to hear from them why they should be the winner for the subcategory. And then also, and this is really in the, in, in, in the context of this award, very important is really the lessons learned because all companies have had different learnings and depending on where you stand in, in your journey and whether you are a startup or an SME or a, a bigger company like an MNC, you have different learnings. And I think that's really what is, is helpful for the audience, but also the other participants so that we can share the learnings. All right, so we will start with our business service um, pitching, and then we will continue in the second um, part of the evening with building an infrastructure. Uh, so Clarissa, if you could go one further. All right, and what is really important, and you might have read about it or heard about it, it's really um, about you tonight, the public, and the possibility to vote for your favorite company. So as you can see here, the jury has 80% of the votes. Um, so because you know the, they are very knowledgeable and have a lot of experience and they have followed the companies over their journey now. And so they have 80% of the votes and the public has actually 20%. And the 20% is split in two elements. So the first element is for tonight. So the public voting that will happen during the pitching sessions so I assume a lot of the companies have brought in their friends and you know, customers, maybe suppliers to vote. So that's one, one element. Then the second element is for all the people that were not able to join tonight, um, we will give, give them a possibility to dial in on the 29th of November as of 8 p.m. in the evening until December the 5th, midnight, to vote on a platform. So we will be providing the links um, for all the people that want to vote um, starting the 29th and they will be able to vote and this will go into the overall assessment of the um, overall winner, but also for the subcategories. So every vote counts. So please, um, if you know, the companies are, are out there, please you know, activate your network, make sure you get in as many people as you can to vote for you. 
And for tonight, you know, if you are already following us, it's, I think, a great opportunity to um, bring in your view on the public pitching. All right, one further, Clarissa. So um, these are the rules for tonight. Um, so obviously everything is confidential that goes without saying, right? We have a clear agenda, so we will go through that. The jury will be able to refresh their opinions about the pitches. So that's more um, a jury um, thing for them. And then we will have very strict time control with different um, uh, like, like say, um, colors that will indicate to the applicants how much more time they have. Don't forget it's three minutes pitching and three minutes Q&A. And I think with this, uh, we can go one further, Clarissa. All right, and that brings us to our first subcategory, business services, very happily supported and sponsored by DSV. So uh, big, big thank you to you, uh, uh, Gino. And Gino Marzola is actually also our first um, jury board member. So he is the managing director of, of Singapore, Malaysia for DSV. And then we also have Hanno Elbrecht, he's the head of the BU technology at DKSH. So very warm welcome to him as well. And then we have Sergio Salvador, um, he's the APAC digital lead for Egon Sander. Also very happy to have him. He's a returning jury member. So thank you very much for the ongoing support. All right, so, and with this, obviously everybody is wondering, so who are the companies? So let's go one further, Clarissa. So we have ADP, um, the advanced delivery platform uh, from Mercuria. We have Mesh Korea from Korea. And we have Speedwork Auto Care from Indonesia. So you can already see a very diverse set of companies and we're very excited to have them tonight. And um, so I think we can already look at uh, who is knocking at the door. Um, our first contestant is ADP Mercuria with their project ADP. We have Mark Bradley. He is the chief operating officer of Mercuria. Uh, Mark, are you are you here? So we might be. No, we're actually on time. So Mark, he's he's in the room that is new to uh, the room. Hi, 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 Andreas, I'm here. Ah, oh, okay, excellent. Mark, how are you? Hey, very good. Thanks for having me. How are you? Very, very well, very well. So we were we were looking for you. So now we, we have you in your meeting room, I guess. And so very warm welcome. And you know the rules, right? We have three minutes for you to, to pitch. We will have to cut you or mute you after three minutes. So apologies for that already. And then we will have three minutes of uh, Q&A um, by our jury board. So when you are ready, Mark, we can start. Let us know and we will start the timer. Great, and, and there's a video as part of our pitch. So um, I'll do a short introduction and then go straight to the video. That's so let's that's quickly, great. Great. yeah. Yeah, so um, Clarissa, you wanna start up the video? All right. And the, the stage is yours. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks to our hosts and esteemed jury members for this fantastic opportunity to showcase the advanced delivery platform. The advanced delivery platform was invented in Switzerland and grown in Singapore, and it was invented to address the lack of transparency and efficiency in the $130 billion global maritime fuel industry. Launched in spring this year, we have used digital technologies, including cloud services, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and the Internet of Things to deploy the world's first fully digital bunkering system. Um, after the video, I'm looking forward to taking your questions. Please play the video, Clarissa. What if there was a better way to bunker? A way that increases efficiency, transparency and trust. At Minerva Bunkering, finding better ways is what we do. And by combining software and hardware into the latest technology, that better way is here. 
Meet the Advanced Delivery Platform, the innovative new system designed to give 360 degree insight into your bunkering operations, real time from anywhere in the world. Connecting the entire fueling process from procurement through post delivery, the ADP saves you time and money by avoiding delays, quality issues, quantity disputes, and shortages. Finally, gain transparency over the whole bunkering process. With the ADP, fuel procurement costs go down while trust goes up. And say goodbye to human error in manual measurements and filling out onboard documentation. Just let the ADP do it for you automatically. As a vessel receives fuel, sensors on board such as a Coriolis mass flow meter precisely measure the exact quantity supplied and all relevant fuel characteristics. This live data is sent via a secure wireless network to ADP on board, which populates a complete suite of digital documentation aligned with SS648 standards, virtually eliminating manual entry. This way, two to three hours can be saved per operation. Best of all, the entire process can be monitored anywhere in the world via the ADP Clear customer portal. With data feeding directly into third-party systems, cutting the need for human input anywhere in the process. And as well as viewing granular data from each stage of the operation, users can drill down into historic bunker deliveries too. And by reducing time spent taking bunkers, as well as the platform's ability to track and report emissions, the ADP helps underpin the industry's path to net zero. So there you go. If you want efficiency, transparency and trust, and an intelligent platform designed to reduce cost and risk, the Advanced Delivery Platform proves there is a better way to bunker. For more information, contact us today. All right. Thank you very much, Mark, for that video. And I think with this, we can open the floor to questions of our jury about your pitch. So please. Yeah, maybe let me go first. Hey, hi, Mark. It is Hanno speaking. How are you doing? Hi, hey. Hey, good Thanks night. for the presentation. Um, I have one question, Wanda. How do you commercialize this solution? So basically, how do you plan to, to make money with this? So, so originally, this is a, a proprietary system for Minerva Bunkering to better service their customers and better service our interactions with port authorities around the world. Um, so there is an immediate value proposition there that the lack of transparency on bunkering at the moment can cost customers in certain locations up to 10% of their delivery. Um, so it's, it's initially commercialized internally amongst customers to come to the most trusted bunker provider uh, in the market. Ultimately, though, the ADP will become a multi-party open access platform. So once it has been deployed into the industry and has a, a significant uptake, we, we believe port authorities around the world will look to mandate platforms like the ADP and they will become open to all suppliers. So initially it will be an internalized profit generator, but ultimately this is being built with a view to being a market platform. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Any other questions? Sergio or Gino? Um, hi, Mark. Uh, this is uh, Sergio. How are you doing? Um, very quick Thanks question for me. Um, what uh, could be the single most important thing that makes or break that makes or breaks your your this business? And so the, the, the real key when we came in was there was nothing we could take off the shelf. So we had to build everything from scratch. So the hardware is proprietary hardware called the Sentinel. Um, and we have two, two issues of software, one locally that's transmitted by a, a Wi-Fi mesh network that connects in the two parties. And then one hosted in the cloud that has a lot of inbuilt um, sort of advanced technology in it. So it's on an operating platform um, with proprietary blockchain. Um, it, it uses artificial intelligence to optimize customer value. Um, so really, the, the, the biggest risk in there is that it has been developed internally entirely all the way through. So there are a lot of moving parts that we've had to manage globally. And during COVID, it's obviously been a difficult project to manage. 
because we, we, we haven't been able to get in the room together and test it out. We're also deploying this technology at sea, literally at sea, between two operating vessels. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of challenges. So for a customer, they get the value proposition, but they're skeptical that, skeptical that someone has actually managed to fire the golden bullet. Um, so really, it's just getting it out there and showcasing to everyone that this works as is um, and, and that it can provide the value that the existing customers are already seeing. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, one last question, or we're actually running out of time. So if there is, unless there's a burning question, a quick one. Uh, just a quick one. How quickly Richard. could you set it up with all this proprietary software and items if I want to have it now? Um, so it's deployable instantly um, at the moment once we ship out the hardware to, to, the, to the vessel. But if somebody else wanted to come in, uh, it's taken us 18 months of development, trial and error, and commitment to get it right. Um, so, so customers can use it instantly today, um, but, but there's a reason the industry has remained analog for a long time. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it takes a commitment to get there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, and I'm so sorry, time is over. So um, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate your um, contribution and your preparation and your pitch. So thank you. And you will hear thank from you. us. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So, and with this, we are coming to our second contestant, uh, which is MASH Korea with their digital on demand last mile delivery service. And it's Jiun Lee, co founder and chief of staff to the CEO. Um, are you here, Jiun? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, very good. So, you know the rules? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So um, the stage is yours. Okay. Good evening. I'm Ji Hun Lee from Mesh Korea, and thank you for this great opportunity to show our business. Next slide, please. Uh, there is a word called Jumbo Inch in Korea, which means the information should go together when logistics flows. Every client of us told me that they wanted to outsource their logistics infrastructure, last mile delivery, fulfillment service, trucking, and etc. But they told me that it's quite not easy to do that. The reason why they could not outsource their logistics was lack of digitalization at the area. Nobody shows the ongoing process of logistics, and there is no company who can give people detailed data regarding SEM. We found out that the key for logistics innovation is data and direct operation. From 2012, we built digital logistics platform called Room. At first, we started with real-time delivery service, which is easily known as food delivery, and we expanded our service to exclusive delivery, same-day delivery, done delivery, fulfillment service, and full micro-fulfillment center for quick commerces. For all these service, services I mentioned, we collected more than 1 billion transactions regarding them and we succeeded to build optimized routing, supply and demand forecasting using those data. We also provide our clients how to execute marketing campaign where to start their new retail stores through our enormous real-time data. We are also providing our logistics solution itself to some of clients who want to digitalize their logistics with their own assets. More than six conglomerates in Korea are already using our TMS, OMS to manage and improvement, improve the quality of the service and the cost for managing their infrastructures. I like the quote by Peter Drucker, if you can measure it, you cannot manage it. Our vision is exactly the same. We want to measure everything regarding logistics and we want to match them to operate them perfectly with highly optimized efficiency. So to fulfill our client's needs, we invested a lot in our own running logistics infrastructure, which led to more than 10 different services, as you can see on the right side. We could have done this because all our IT system was built by ourselves so that we could effectively broaden our domain area. And we will continue to expand our service area furthermore. Next slide, please. 
We are expanding our business to related large areas like finance, infrastructure development, quick commerce, B2C platform, and other more. We also have great vision of our tasks outside Korea. Korea's e-commerce GMB is best in Yoon, I have, uh, we had to mute you. Sorry for that, three minutes are over. Apologies, um, but we have to open the floor to the Q&A now. Thank you very much for your pitch. So um, yeah, the floor is open to questions. Okay, uh, hi, Gina speaking here. Good morning. No, good, good afternoon morning. to you. Morning for morning. me. Uh, Mm, hello, Gino. Uh, oh, that's not going to work. Yeah. So oh. I think. Hello? I th I think maybe Hanno or yeah. or or Sergio, I can if you maybe have, have a follow up question. question. Yeah. Hey, Jin Hun, hi. Uh, just because uh -huh. in your pitch also you wrote that you potentially could become a fintech company and you will uh, you know launch a lot of new database value adding services. Could you give us a few concrete examples? What kind of services you will offer next? Okay, so uh, in our platform there are more than four. 40,000 drivers in our platform, and they are uh, earning all the money from our system. And then they are renting our motorcycle motorcycles. So we already uh, started to make some financial services like that for the uh, drivers for the motorcycle renting or all the uh, seller loan, including some. Uh, so. Yeah, with the uh, products. So we wanted to lend some money to the manufacturers and we can do that because we have all the financial uh, transaction data in including the e-commerce and also retail commerce. So yeah, we try to make a little bit less uh, IRR or the ratio for the our sellers and the drivers and we succeeded to do that. Yep. Can you understand that? Got it. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Sorry for that. So Gion, we have Gino asking. I'm, I'm asking on behalf of him because he has some uh, sound problems. So is your logistics platform open for other logistics services providers or only for direct clients or customers? Oh, that's his oh. question. We are also selling our logistics platform to other logistics service. So as I men mentioned in the pitch, uh, there are some conglomerates wanting to use our logist logistics platform to improve their own logist in logistics infrastructure, like Pumu One in Korea or GS Retail or some other e-commerce platform uh, companies in Korea. Okay. Yep. Thank and also you. we are talking with some other tech giants. We cannot say that because of the NDA, but like we will uh, make them cloud. Yes. The yes. Service. Yep. So we have one last question. Okay. Um, hi, Ji Hoon. Um, maybe fairly quickly as well. Um, what's your thinking around expansion, geographical expansion? So we want, uh, as I know, the Korea's e-commerce GMB is fifth in the world and expect to be third soon uh, after America and China. So I think uh, Korean market is really big for us at the moment. And then we have to uh, fulfill the needs at the moment uh, at, in the Korea first, but like we, have a uh, great vision to expand our system to other countries. Like we are talking with some uh, Thailand company now at the moment to sell our system. 
and also we can expand our system and also service to other countries, I think. Okay. Thank you, Jiun. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank the, you time is, the time yeah. is over. So thank you very much for your um, for your uh, answers and your preparation. Okay. Um, really appreciate. And um, yeah, we wish you um, a nice evening and you will hear from us. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. All the best. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, and with this, we are coming to our next contestant, which is Speedwork Auto Care Indonesia with their Moto Express project. So, for Yanto, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, excellent. excellent. So you know, you know the rules. You know everything, right? Yes. Okay. Right. So, excellent. Thank you. <laughs> For the opportunity, I'm so proud to represent Indonesia. Next slide, please. Very good. So the stage is yes. yours, please. Yes. So uh, actually today, I would like to share a business concept that we prototyped since last year. It is a smart kiosk, a smart kiosk providing quick services for motorcycle with big business opportunity to serve 75 million motorcycle in Indonesia. And I always receive the same question. What is the difference with others? So actually we put technology and data at the core of the business operation. And today we have achieved 80% success rate on the profitability and we aim to improve it further. And I want to use this as an example actually on how digital transformation can bring possibility to raise the bar on auto care industry. In the same time, bring positive social impact. Next slide, please. So we digitalize all the value chain. We create an app for both our end consumer and kiosk owner to provide the best buying experience for B2B2C to improve operational efficiency and manage the waste properly. And actually the biggest engine behind the scene is to ensure just in time inventory availability with affordable costs. And I will tell you why. Next slide, please. The biggest advantage of small kiosks, it is agile, easy to move and reduce investment cost, but it comes with biggest challenge, not much space for inventory. As a result, to ensure availability sometimes become very costly. So finally, we managed to solve this issue by combining delivery vehicle with data and machine learning. Next slide, please. Our key differentiation is our ability to integrate digitalization I mentioned earlier with our unique supporting ecosystem from product support, marketing and business assistance, human capital and kiosk and the tooling itself. Next slide, please. Right location is critical for retail business and we have secured enough location to make us number one market leader. And we managed to achieve four times faster on the expansion compared to traditional workshop and target to open 5,000 new kiosks in the next three years. Next slide, please. This business concept potentially upgrade more than 100,000 micro entrepreneurship like this in Indonesia. And the thing that makes me excited we have tested our business model. We have tested our business model to some of them and the result was amazing. And I want to convert as much as possible. Next slide, please. As a closing, I believe that digital transformation should bring inclusivity by enabling partnership and create social impact to the community where we operate and make it better business, better world. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for your for your um, for your pitch and um, you know very exciting um, information. So with this, the floor is open to the to the jury to ask questions. Yeah. Good afternoon, Gino here. Um, afternoon. I actually just have a quick question: Are you only in Java or are you in other locations? One, two. How many people and how do you control all of that? Because we all know Indonesia is massive. Thank you. Correct. Uh, number one, actually, we are across Indonesia. But from the start, we start from the Java first and then expand across Indonesia. And how we control it is like a question, good question. We allocate one area coordinator to monitor every 20 kiosks. Without that, it will not successful. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
any other which, questions? Which, which competitors are you going to face and what are you doing about it? Okay, uh, my competitor actually a big company and uh, uh, my strategy is number one, of course, the digitalization and combined with our unique ecosystem. And number two, this is very important. We, 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 I find out that product and services are easy to duplicate, but customer service culture is not easy to duplicate. So I built this in the day one. And while we make sure our business is uh, successful, we already explore the future to service electric motor vehicles. Okay, thanks. Um, one quick question uh, for Janto. So, in terms of uh, you know, just in time availability of, of, of parts and, and components, so how do you do that um, in terms of supply chain? Do you have then contracts with the brands or do you have DCs uh, where, you, where you ensure um, availability on site? That seems to me a, a huge challenge. Correct, exactly. This is a huge challenge, never ending learning. So, first, we use data to make sure we understand what are the every kiosk need and when to fulfill them. After that, we work with our brand principle and combining with our own distribution center. Got it, thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? I think in interest of time, you know, I have a lot of, questions <laughs> yeah please please we, we we still have time yeah and then internationalization because southeast asia that's do you have any roadmap already in terms of uh, bringing that or where do you see the biggest opportunity outside of indonesia in, in southeast asia yes vietnam is the answer vietnam. yeah so how, how many motorcycles are, are there compared uh, to indonesia do you know? indonesia 75 million yeah yeah, and Vietnam maybe half of it, okay. but the population is also less. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's uh, uh, my, my my next international plan. Okay. Is there, is there any other country where there's such a solution already? Uh, not I aware of in the ASEAN. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So uh, time is over for Yonto. Thank you very much for your. Um, preparation and um, your pitch. Oh, actually, and, I have uh, one more question if I can answer how I get qualified mechanic. Actually, uh, actually, please. sorry for you, Anto. we cannot, we cannot oh, okay. allow that. We yeah, only have three yeah. minutes. Sorry okay. for that. But maybe you can answer that um, offline, you know, um, yeah. by email or, or no anything. problem. No problem. We're happy to forward you all the, all, In the chat. All, all the questions. Absolutely. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And have a good time and we will yep. be in touch with you. Yeah, Thank sure. you. All right, so let's move now to, uh, we have discussed all the three um, contestants, ADP, Mesh Korea and Speedwork. And I think a very diverse set of different companies and um, you know, from different parts of this uh, region also. So I think very, very interesting for the public also now to, to vote. So we are going to um, prepare for the live poll. So Clarissa, if you would be so kind, we have 30 seconds and everybody that is online can now vote for ADP, Mercuria, Mesh Korea or Speedwork. So let's give them 30 seconds. And just as a reminder to everybody, this is going to be one element that will go into the overall assessment uh, that combined with the, with the public voting that will happen um, as of the 29th um, midnight. This will then count 20%. And we will have our jury obviously also contribute um, to that assessment uh, based on tonight's pitches. So, we will communicate that winner on the 9th of December. So please um, stay tuned and make sure you join the session on the 9th of December. Okay, so Clarissa, you give me a signal when we are ready on this live polling. Let's yes, see. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry? We are ready. 
You are ready? Okay, then let's bring it up. Let's see how the public has voted. Let's see the ratings. Okay, ADP, Mercuria, Mesh Korea, and we have a clear um, selection for uh, speed work, uh, 80%. So that's quite um, a significant uh, voting here. Um, as mentioned, we are using that um, to kind of um, round off the overall assessment. So um, that's not the last um, kind of uh, view, but um, it's already a very good indication. So let's see how this will play out. All right, so um, we are now also in the interest of time. Uh, let's go to our next subcategory. We have closed the business services subcategory and we are now moving to the building and infrastructure subcategory, um, proudly uh, presented by R RIB. And um, we have Andre Schutz here, the senior vice, uh, senior vice president global strategy <clears throat> of RIB. So thank you again for uh, your support as a sponsor. We have um, Hyun Jung, she is partner and innovation lead for Deloitte in Korea. And we have Alvin Tan, he's the chief customer solution officer for Capital Land. So very warm welcome to our jury, uh, to this pitching night and the great to have you here tonight. And now let's look at the companies that will be competing tonight. Go one further. So we have iSpada, Smart Logistics, we have CBRE and we have Siemens. Um, these three companies have been shortlisted and we're very happy to have them here tonight. And we will start with iSpada, Smart Logistics. And we have um, Jean-Christophe here. Jean-Christophe Lee, are you here? Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. So Hi, good evening. Hi, hi. You know the rules, right? The three yes. minutes? Yes. So please, the stage is yours. OK, uh, good evening, everyone. I am Jean-Christophe Lee, co-founder of Espada. So we are a Singapore-based construction technology startup. And our aim is to tackle logistic challenges for the built environment. And our product is an on-demand material delivery platform. And we help to match construction companies to a network of underutilized heavy vehicles, such as lorries and lorry cranes. So since our product launched in November 2020, we have seen growth of 15% month on month over the past one year. And our focus was how can we help our customers to change from their traditional method of booking lorries to adopting our digital solution. So as such, we spent a lot of time improving the user experience on our platform and also ensure that the whole booking process went smooth. Next slide, please. So over the past few months, we realized that we had increasing demands for lorries for workers' transportation. We then asked ourselves, why are companies ferrying their workers at the back of lorries, even when the lorries are not carrying any material? So this practice has been present for over 20 years in Singapore. In 2010, Singapore implemented a high railing and canopy for each lorry used to ferry workers but this did not stop injuries and casualties whenever there are road accidents. So earlier this year, a few workers got injured and some lost their lives. I'm sure you have read the news. So there have been more calls to ban the usage of lorries to ferry workers. But while this is an ongoing debate, so we at Espada, we felt that it was our duty as a local technology startup to tackle this issue and initiate a change in this industry. Next slide, please. So we quickly identified that thousands of small and medium-sized companies did not have direct access to bus services because first the bus operators were looking for long-term contracts and they did not have sufficient minibuses to cater for, for this market. So we are talking here about 304,000 migrant workers who need transportation every day. So we use our digital platform to consolidate minibuses operators on the market and made them available on demand to construction companies without the need for long-term contracts. So far, there are 300 buses committed and over 60 companies have registered on the platform this month. So if you believe what we are doing is great for the industry, please support us by voting for Espada. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Jean-Christophe. Um, and with this, we would open the floor to um, the Q&A, please. Yes. Hi, Jean-Christophe. Just one quick question from my side. Um, how are you planning, if at all, to scale, uh, for example, in, in the region or other countries in, in general? Okay, so currently our immediate plan is Singapore market, as we feel that we need a stronger foothold, both locally, uh, uh, locally, both in terms of traction and resources. But we are also looking for a seed round next year. And as for the demand for the construction, we definitely see there's a demand for it. But we need to look for the right partner to in order to expand regionally. Yeah, we are currently talking to a, a couple of investors who are looking at beyond Singapore as well. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Hi, Christoph. Uh, this is Hyunjung Kim. I just wonder, uh, do you have any uh, plan to expand your uh, service concept into other category rather than uh, construction? Okay, uh, so the, the funny thing is that we, we launch in construction, but a lot of the customers that we have are from other industries as well. So from marine industry, manufacturing industry as well. Yeah, so it's definitely something there. We, we've been uh, matching them with uh, lorries and buses. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Elvin? Oh, I'm fine, yeah. You're, you're fine? Thanks. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Any, any other uh, questions from our jury? Good on my end. Yeah. Okay. Jean-Christophe, anything important you want to say to our jury? Mm, actually, I just wanted to add that. So I, I believe our solution has the most impact in terms of potentially saving human lives. So by solving is a two decade long issue in Singapore. So we hope we can have your support. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So if you don't have anything to add, I think we can, um, we can stop it here. Thank you very much, Jean-Christophe. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. For your preparation and your, um, your dedication. So we will get in touch with you. And until then, all the best. Yeah, thank you. All right, and that brings us to our next candidate. Um, we are inviting CBRE with a virtual twin solution. Um, and I think we should have Vivek Krishan, the executive director, project management operations for APAC. He should be there. Vivek, can you hear me? Might be Vivek. Uh, hi, can you see me? Yes, we can okay, hear you, so we can I... see you. We... Excellent. Excellent. Yes. So please, the stage is yours. You know the rules, right? Three minutes Absolutely. and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I really like to thank everyone for giving us the opportunity. I and my colleague uh, Senghan, uh, also on this call, uh, we represent uh, the PJM as in project management in, at CBRE here in APAC. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Ah, okay, I, I was getting uh, background noise. Anyway, um, next slide, please. So I'm sure everyone would, under, would know the CBRE group. It is a Fortune 500 world's largest commercial real estate services and investment firm and is ranked the number one in the real estate sector in 2021. This is for the third consecutive year. The project management business unit at CBRE was established as a separate business unit to look at the end-to-end -end project lifecycle management, transforming the client journey at CBRE. So as we continue to grow, it became quite apparent to us that in order to ensure a consistent client, employee, and partner experience, we had to build and implement a robust and comprehensive digital strategy, bringing in tools and technology to enhance the end-to-end -end project 
life cycle and client journey. Through digitization, the endeavor is to improve the sales enablement by implementing Salesforce, client engagement through satisfaction surveys, go-to-market and service offerings through data analytics, health and safety of the teams through incident response and health checks, tracking and improvement of projects to our Kahua proprietary project plat management platform, manage risk and build a strong supply chain through the MyBuy and My Supplier tools, all with a clear focus on transparency, data analytics, and best practice sharing. This, this strategy was further reinforced as we navigated to the unprecedented pandemic situation over 18, 18 past months. Next slide, please. I would now, now like to hand over to my colleague, Seng Han, to walk us through the project life cycle, lessons learned and progress so far. Thank you, Vivek. As we are in the service line, client satisfaction is our utmost priority. In order to fulfill that, we have to provide our global clients with consistent services, value-added analytics, and solutions. As you can see the before, it reflects a mass and a non-standardized manner of service delivery, with the team performing what's convenient and using tools that they're only familiar with. This lacks consistency in our delivery approach. Uh, as we, moving on to the after, we have a deployment of a standard uh, suite of tech tools. Data can be housed in a secured and logical platform, which we can then analyze and provide insights to our client. All in all, not only see very gain efficiencies in our internal operations, but at the same time, this improves our communication and consistency in the delivery to our client. Next slide, please. So why do we embark on the digitization journey and why we should win the award? It's clear to us that we want to be a better employer than our competitor and a great partner to our client. Gone are the days we spend 70% of our time. Apologies, the <laughs> three minutes are over. I'm really sorry for that, but that's we're very strict on the timing. So uh, we would like to open the floor now for the Q&A. Please. One question, uh, Vivek and Naseng Han. Thanks for sharing with us your, your project. Where are you now uh, in this project in terms of implementation? Have you rolled out in Singapore or which other countries have rolled this out? So we have rolled this out across APAC. Uh, all, all the tools and technology um, are rolled in every region and every, every country. We, we support 14 countries in APAC and uh, all the tools and technology are available across Across all so countries. how long has this uh, system been operating? This has been operating. We are still on the journey. Uh, we haven't yet completed the journey, but we started this journey. We have implemented a bunch of tools and technology, as you could see. Um, we have been in, on this journey for this year so far. So we started off in January and we moved on and we continue with the journey right now. Okay. So what are the, uh, how do you measure the success? for this uh, uh, platform? Uh, multiple and, ways, and, multiple mm -hmm. ways, right? So we have metrics uh, for adoption, for example. Are we, are the, are the teams, are our project managers adopting this, um, uh, the technology? Are they using this technology? Are they visiting the sites? Are they visiting the, um, the tools? So we've got that uh, metrics running. We have, uh, we constantly, talk to the, to, to the teams. The most important, I think, is our senior management is asking our teams to present back on the monthly reviews, for example, back to them using these tools and technologies, using the data from this, trying to bring out insights. So all of these elements ensures or lets us know that, yes, there is adoption, there is uh, senior management support, and more importantly, we get a lot of feedback. And feedback is good as we continue on this journey, right? So, so we know that it is being adopted across the region. Thank you. Thank you. I also have questions. Uh, thank you for sharing all uh, the journey stories. So you, you just mentioned that it's been a year to implement this digital transformation, right? Uh, yes. I mean, since a year we have been at, on this journey, yes. Yeah. It's been, what? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, what do you think that the biggest I mean, challenges uh, you and your team faced while you actually uh, get through the journey? I mean, this year and how you actually address that challenge. 
Yeah, I can, I can attempt yeah. to go. I go mean, ahead, I can Sarah. attempt to go with this. So I think that the major challenge is the culture alone, right? So we have been, we have been, uh, the nature of our company, we've been through many m and and acquisitions. So people come from different piece of the business. But right now we just want, you know, to set aside, you know, a, a, a standardized strategy in, the, in this digitization journey where, you know, the communication is key, right? We overcome, you know, we just keep, need to keep making our guys engage and know, you know, the, the, the long journey ahead. You know, we've, we've, of course, we have a lot of um, sprints in between, like Viva has mentioned, the digitization journey is, is a marathon. But we want to keep people, you know, high spirit and high confidence. We, we, we sort of input a lot of pockets of sprints in the middle with, um, you know, short, short wins in the middle so that it keeps our people very engaged and um, looking forward to the next um, digitization initiatives. All right, Seng Hong, thank you very much. Thanks. For that and uh, thank you for your time uh, unfortunately time is over also for the q a it's a short uh, three minutes um yeah so thank you for uh, you know the preparation and your pitch and all the best you will hear from us thank, thank you very you much everybody. thank you for the Have a great evening thanks all right so that brings us to our third contestants um which is siemens um with C Connect, and we should have Byron um, Heath. Byron, Correct. are you here, VP Portfolio for Digital Enterprise? That's your right title, right? Correct. Okay, Byron, uh, you know you know all the the rules. I know the rules. I have. Uh, it's just me. No presentation. Um, my video is shared. Do I fill the screen by just doing that, or is there more I need to do? No, this is fine. If this it's, is fine. Yes, absolutely. We can hear you. We can see you. The stage is yours. Perfect. Hello, my name is uh, Byron Heath, and I'm representing Siemens for our project called C-Connect, an employee workplace experience solution. So why was it important for the company? And the answer is twofold. But like many things, the pandemic was a catalyst to fast track the implementation of workplace experience. But the scope is not simply a short term fix for the pandemic. Workplace experience is poised to be a cornerstone of the new normal in offices well into the future. So on the one hand, Siemens had an urgent issues to address. We required a single pane of glass for employee communication, comply with governmental occupancy thresholds, uh, to monitor who came in the building. And this meant we had to enable yet limit desk and room booking options. For corporate real estate, they needed to better understand and utilize the floor space. On the other hand, Comfy is a solution we sell our customers. And what better way to learn and lead than by example? So why should we win? Well, some people may think Siemens is an old-fashioned company that makes high-quality hardware. It's true. Uh, but the implementation of workplace experience, along with the announcement that 140,000 employees can now work flexibly, is a monumental shift. It's an example of the world that not only does Siemens make digital solutions, but we're using them. And if we can do it, any company can. And here's a bold statement. We can't think of any digital solution that would have more far-reaching impact and workplace experience. The benefits may be one ingredient in retaining people during what's being called the great resignation. Companies need a solution to allow employees to be heard, to feel empowered. You, the experience should be frickless frictionless and efficient in the office, from finding the right desk in the right room at the right time, to controlling lighting or temperature or calling an elevator and locating people and things you need right now. This can't be done fully without an integrated workplace experience solution. In the new normal office, right sizing is going to be hugely important. In the past, we would waste 30% of our office space. And now new questions arise. Who's coming back? How many? How often? What are they going to do in the office? And these patterns need to be captured and understood by corporate real estate to make proper decisions. And what were the lessons learned? What are the most noticeable results? Lots of lessons. There's nothing like uh, getting your hands dirty to understand the reality of a deployment. Comes down to the basics, better communication, training, monitoring, feedback, tweak and repeat. The project has allowed us to rewrite the book on preparation customer engagement and implementation. And it is exciting as soon we'll be heading back to the office and be able to utilize a new range of benefits of the solution, especially as we try and fit 1300 people into a space meant for 900. Thank you. All right, Byron, thank you so much. Right on time. So very uh, impressed. 
Um, the, sto uh, the stage is open for questions. Yes, hi, Baron. Thanks for the presentation. Um, just one quick question. How many customers do you already have using this solution? Uh, exact numbers don't know. We're in the tens of millions of square um, feet and covering all the continents um, right now. Okay, thanks. And then maybe just one quick additional question. Sorry. Would you expect uh, the, the tool to be less relevant in a past COVID world? No, I mean, I wish I could have worked more into this. I mean, two years prior, again, I was trying to fit 900 people in a space for 500. All right. And, and it just happens to be future proof that you can flip it around. Now we're trying to fit 100 people in a, in a, a space for um, meant for 900. Soon we're going to try and put 1300 into that same space. So it's really about right sizing. It's about convenience for for the employee. Um, again, a friction, frictionless environment. And that is COVID working from home and coming in the office every once in a while to being flexible and coming in um, when necessary in the future and being able to share these resources. Something I had to wrap my brain around, um, uh, which was difficult at first. And now, now I love it. I go in, book my desk, do all these things. This is how the future is going to be. Mm. Thank you. Byron, just now you mentioned about the customers. These are internal customers or these are external customers? E e external customers. So company's been around for a while, but we at Siemens have chose to you know drink our own champagne as they say and and as i said we we had a need this was a perfect fit and we started to deploy this around the world i was heavily involved uh, with our team here um, in singapore uh, to roll this out in our own campus so the project didn't start from uh, singapore singapore is just one of the adopting countries it's one of the adopting countries this was a, an initiative from headquarter along with the 140,000 people that can be flexible Headquarter made this initiative. Um, countries are picking their sites and, and rolling this out independently through our, our corporate real estate group. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, any other questions? So I have a question. So, what, I mean, uh, Byron, what do you think the biggest challenge in the future when you actually roll out this solution into, I mean, more customers or, I mean, more deeper at your, uh, I mean, corporation. It's 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 a cultural change. It is. It's I think it's no different than most digital type of of, of project. It is a cultural change. Talking to one person who said, uh, I don't I don't need to book a desk. We have all these free desks. And I went, Yeah, that's the problem. You know, <laughs> you have too many free desks. But how do we know this? How can we measure it? So it is a cultural change. You know, I'm in my mid fifties. I didn't want to have a desk that I book. I had the same desk for uh, you know ten years in Siemens. Now. I pick a desk, I search for a window desk with a, this view and an HDMI connector. I find it, I book it, I'm done. It is a cultural change. It's, it's realizing you're not gonna have that same desk waiting for you. Um, I think this is the, the most difficult part in all digital projects. Very good. Thank you very much, Byron. On time again, so very, very much. Thank you for, uh, for that. Thank you for the, the preparation and your pitch. And all the best for the future with, you, with your initiative and you will hear back from us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. And that, that brings us to the end of our second subcategory. Um, and we are now going into the live poll. So we had, um, as with the category before, a very different set of different companies and solutions. We had Aspada. Um, you know, a Singaporean startup um, trying to solve uh, issues. And we have already the poll coming up, so I'm not going to talk much more. Um, you have the choice here. So, dear public, please vote for your company. Um, we have a really interesting um, collection of different uh, solutions. So, CBRE also uh, um, a long established company. And then also Siemens with, um, you know, some really um, interesting project. So we will wait 30 seconds until we can um, have the final view on the voting. So bear, bear with me just a couple of more seconds. And then I'm sure Clarissa will tell us when she's ready. So is it Espada, is it CBRE, or is it Siemens? Let us know. And again, please 
you know, if you're voting now and you still have, um, you know, some more people that want to vote, you will be able to um, have that by tonight, midnight, you can start to vote for these companies. All right, so I'm hearing we are ready. So Clarissa, please bring it up. What is the result? Okay, oh wow, that's a pretty um, interesting result. So we have Isparta with 18%, we have CBRE 43% and we have Siemens with 39%. So a very tight race between CBRE and Siemens. Um, but again, this is not the final verdict. Uh, we will have the jury meeting obviously uh, later on and we will then also have the public uh, voting starting tonight, um, midnight. All right, and that draws or brings us to the end of tonight's session. Um, so thank you very, very much for all the contestants, ADP, uh, Mesh Korea, Speedwork, uh, Sparta, CBRE and Siemens. Um, we really appreciate your, your work and your, your time that you put into these um, pitches. Uh, we know it takes a lot of time and a lot of commitment. So thank you very, very much. Um, at this stage, we, it's also a hint to the jury to move to the discussion rooms. And we are gonna um, also remind you, if you can press one further, Clarissa is really reminding you um, for the 9th December. So please mark these, uh, the 9th December um, in your calendars. Uh, we will have the final pitching night uh, on the digital transformation, but also the people and skills development award. Um, so that's a, a award that is um, actually complementary to the digital transformation award. And it's gonna be very interesting, lots of interesting guests, and you will have the possibility to vote for the winning, um, for the winning company that will win the overall uh, digital transformation award. So with this, I would like to thank all our sponsors, uh, all the contestants, and also the team that is uh, working in the background um, to make this happen. This is a, a big, big logistical exercise. So I would like to thank the team that has put so much time and effort into, into that project. So uh, with this, I would like to wish you a very nice evening and all the best. Take good care and please join us on the 9th of December. All the best. Thank you.